Thank you. Thanks. Enjoy. Look at that. Mmm. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rich. I'm Nick. And we are Twin Trees Creative. Today we're going to talk about which one of these lenses we're going to sell. So we've got the 70 to 200 mil here. They're all, these are all Canon lenses. Uh, this is 24 to 105, which is, comes as the kit lens. I got that when I got my uh, Canon 6D. 15 to 35, the RF lens, the new one. Nifty 50 Prime there. Nifty 50. We've got the 100 mil macro, and we've got the 35 millimeter prime lens. We're shooting on a, a 24 mil as well. Lots of lenses. Mm, pretty good range here. We've got these over probably the last two, three years as we've been doing jobs. Just trying to fill each each project really with the right lens, getting the right equipment, um, and we've probably overdone it. So let's start with the 70 to 200. How long have you had it for? I think about about two years ago. Why did you buy it? What were you buying it specifically for? Why did I buy it? Bought it for nature, for photography and videography. I just found that I wasn't getting <laughs> close enough to the best. But I wanted the 2.8 on the aperture side and I wanted that focal length um, with the versatility of 70 to 200 so I could use it for any portraits or any other sort of professional work we were doing. So let's talk about practical use. Hold it, it's massive. Yeah. It is heavy. I mean, it's been okay. said you could kill a man with this thing. Like, you probably could kill a... Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what that's for. A man and his family. Just to, it's not the sort of lens that you'd take out just on a whim. You've used this on videos we've done where you've wanted to be kind of away from the action. Especially with like bands or, or if you're doing an outdoor event, you want to capture natural moments mm. um, without being too much in the face, which obviously you need to be. Maybe not so much with a 24 to 105, but certainly with uh, one of the other like yeah. 35 mil lens. So yeah, it's a fantastic lens. It's got great image stabilization on it. If you wanted to, you could double it up with an extender. So you could get the 1.5 extender, uh, or you could get the two extender, uh, two times extender, which would obviously make it a 400 mil lens. The only thing I'd say is, uh, if you stick it on the EOS R body, which I'm using now with the adapter, it is massive. So it's, um, I mean, this is the EOS R. Look at that, it's an absolute donkey. Mm. The detail on it's amazing. Um, so that one definitely is not being sold. So it's expensive, it's heavy, but it does a damn good job. It does a brilliant job mm. uh, if and when you use it. I think anyone who's doing photography, videography, um, that needs that versatility, you've got to get a lens like that. So let's go down to this end of the table. We've got the 35 millimeter prime lens and you've been using this a lot over the last six mm. months. So what's your experience been of this? Yeah, the reason I bought that one at the time for us was uh, it, we had a band shoot coming up and we knew it was going to be a dark environment. Uh, we knew we wanted that really cinematic shallow depth of field. 1.4 aperture lets loads of light in. Well, again, it's also an expensive lens. Mm. Um, pretty heavy. It's it got a stabilizer on it or not? No. So it's been great for low light shoots. So really it's unique feature, apart from being a, a really high class L series prime lens is the low aperture, mm. 1.4. Are we keeping this on the table or are we pulling this back? Well, that's going to compete potentially with okay. another one or two that we've got in the in the bag. So Just keep it here. Let's leave it there for now. So let me ask you about your macro lens, your 100 mm. mil. Uh, so this has got stabilizer. You can do some fantastic close-up shots. You done a few video shoots. Um, product, product shoots. Product shoots, yeah. It's probably not a lens that I use that frequently. Probably a little bit like your 70 to 200. Get a really, really sharp image. You haven't got masses of versatility with this. Obviously, you've got to move your legs. Again, like the 70 to 200. Um, I'd say the same as what you said. When you when the shot is right and when you you know you use this lens, it's absolutely brilliant. You get fantastic images. I think as well this cost probably about a quarter of the the seventy well, two hundred. Yeah, it was about five hundred pounds ish. Yeah, possibly a nice to have lens. So what are we doing with that? This is the keep line. Yeah, I this I is the sales line. I don't think I would want to get rid of that because when you use it, it's brilliant. Okay, I'm happy with that. I think we've got some product shoots coming up soon. That's going to be pretty good for that. We have. All right, let's jump down the line back to the 24105 then. So what are we doing with this? So I got this on the 6D, which I bought five years ago or something now for a uh, friend's wedding at the time. He asked me to be his wedding photographer, which I'd never done before. So I went out, got a 6D, got this kit lens, which is the 24 to 105, mm -hmm. an absolute workhorse. Uh, it's got the stabilizer on it as well. Obviously it's got auto manual focus. So it's, it's been bashed around and it's done its job, mm -hmm. but I find myself using it less and less because mm -hmm. These days I'm not going out as much just with my camera taking photos. It tends to be specific purposes. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, we're in controlled environments. We're not uh, out and about doing uh, candid shots in the street. However, I did use it when I did do that the other week. Um, mm. Around Christmas time, I went out into town and I just wanted to get some little snaps of, uh, you know, people enjoying the Christmas market. And that was the lens I wanted to use. So it, there's nothing special about it compared to some of the other lenses. However, it's fantastic to have in the kit and if you need it, it's never gonna let you down. So I think you see, keeping, sounds like keeping you like it. it. Keeping it's it. Staying, okay. it's gotta stay. Okay. Okay, let's go to this little nifty 50. I mean, the size of that is beautiful, isn't it? It actually feels like a toy. It doesn't feel 
well, I suppose this is all kind of toys to a degree, but it's mm. cute. It's 1.8. Yes, I've used it on some urban shoots. I've used it um, when traveling quite a bit. When was the last time you put it on your body, though? Good question. You can't remember, can you? No, I don't use it very often. So this is about nine, 85, 90 pounds to buy, well, um, there you go. which is really cheap. And it's kind of one of them that I don't use very often. Um, occasionally I feel guilty for not using it, so I get out and, and use it for a bit. You know, could easily get rid of it, but um, is it, is it? for the 50 pounds that I'd sell it for, 40 pounds I'd sell it for. I originally bought this because it's uh, 1.8 aperture, which at the time was the lowest f-stop of the lenses that I had. So I wanted to use it for some um, low light shoots some of the band work that we did. I soon found out that the 50 mm um, focal range was not ideal for that. And that is why I went out and bought the 24 millimeter, which we're shooting with right now. I think you've just decided it's not even worth selling because you're going to get- It's not worth selling, you know, 50 quid for it. Probably less. Let's talk about the camera lens we are shooting with, which is the 24 mm L series from Canon. Fantastic image quality, and it's got that low f-stop of 1.4, which means it's fantastic for uh, any night photography or any light, low light photography whatsoever. And if I'm being honest, I bought the 24 millimeter that we're shooting with right now because of the 35 millimeter that you bought, uh, which jealous. I thought, yeah, I was jealous. It brought some <laughs> fantastic images. And as soon as he started showing me pictures with it, I thought, wow, um, I need a piece of that. So rather than get the 35 mil, I went a bit low and got the 24. And in doing that, I actually sold the zoom lens that I had at the time, which was a Tamron 24 to 70. I, I told him not to sell it. Uh, and I and I thought at the time, you know what, I don't need a zoom lens, I'm gonna have my 100 mil, my 50 mil, and I'm gonna have my 24 mil, and I'll use my legs, I believe I said at the time. <laughs> uh, and the reality is, um, apart from jobs, which is different when we're on you shoots. Need it, you need it in the same way I need this, it's an everyday yeah. out and about. So if I'm out and about, if I'm on holiday, if I'm, you know, whatever, just doing a random shooting, probably more for pleasure or fun than, than any sort of paid work, then, then it's a nightmare having only prime lenses because you're consistently changing the lens, which becomes a real pain, not only for you, but if you're with anyone as well. 24 mm is a fantastic lens, um, but I do sorely miss having a zoom lens. Definitely keeping the 24 mm lens. So the 15 to 35 RF. So this is the first uh, dedicated lens I've got for the Canon EOS R. When I had a Fuji Fine Picks about 20 years ago, <laughs> I, I bought a screw on fish eye lens for it. Yeah. And I used to, I was fascinated with the fish eye lens. I used to just, everything, I'd be taking photos of you know, your face like that. And it looked ridiculous. You can't use it for anything, especially not paid work. But it was just unique and it, it gave some different perspective, which I guess is kind of the reason why I wanted to get this. Um, not least because we had some paid job, jobs coming up where there were tight angles. Got a stabilizer on it, it's f2.8. Um, and it's got a crazy sort of function ring at the top here as well. Mm. It's a beast, it's an absolute beast. I mean, it's a heavy. It's as big as my head nearly. Yeah. Don't do that, <laughs> please. Straight on, you don't need this adapter, which is what the EF lenses do need. So that's kind of a luxury. So you get rid of the adapter, but it's still, look at the size of that. But, you know, it's quite weighty, but when you're doing some shots and you need that stability, it's quite nice. You need that weight behind it. Okay. So that's definitely staying. Uh, it's again, got image stabilizer. <laughs> I'm not getting rid of that because we've just got it, but yeah, it's got image stabilizer. Do we need a 35 and a 24, 1.4? What would you do? So that we could maybe not sell any of them. <laughs> we don't need the 35 mil, so we'll be selling that, and that's pretty much how we make our decisions. <laughs> Be really interested in seeing and hearing what you think. Please leave your comment below. We're going with a 35mm prime lens, L series. That's the lens we're going to sell. From what the lenses we've got on the table here and on the body, the 24mm there, what would you sell? We're going to go and get that on various sales sites now. So, yeah, it'd probably be gone by the time you're watching this video. <laughs> <laughs> Unlucky.